Hi guys, my name is Peter and welcome to a brand new video. In this video, I'm going to talk about EC2 instances. So the agenda of the video is that, first of all, I'll talk about what is an instance. Then we will discuss the different instance types. And after that, we will configure a new instance entirely from scratch. And during that process, I'll basically talk about all the essential things that you guys need to know. And finally, we will discuss about uh, the different ways in which you can connect to an instance and we'll try out that. So this is what we are going to do in this particular video. So first of all, let us see what is an EC2 instance. The full form of EC2 is Elastic Compute Cloud. So in simple word, EC2 is a basic computer that can be virtually accessed. So this is what an EC2 is. So you can configure a high-end machine and you can access that machine right from a computer sitting at home. So this is uh, the beauty of uh, cloud computing. So EC2 has many use cases and one of the major use cases is uh, in the deployment section where we deploy our application onto instance and we configure a lot of things like uh, load balances which can help to divide the balancing. We spin up multiple instances depending upon the load or the traffic on the website. So this is a brief introduction of EC2. So guys, right now let us talk about instance types. So mainly we have got general purpose, compute optimized, memory optimized, accelerated computing and storage optimized instances. And uh, within these instances, you can see again subcategories like A1, T family, M family. So the selection of an instance mainly depend upon the type of application that you want to deploy. So for example, if your application requires more computational power, you'll go for a compute optimized uh, instance. And for example, if your application requires more memory, you will go with a memory optimized instance. And within memory optimized instance, you will either choose between R family, X1 family, depending upon the requirement of the application. So this is the different types of instances. And within each instance, you can again select a particular instance type. So mainly we have got general purpose, compute optimized, memory optimized, accelerated computing and storage optimized. So this is a high level overview of what are the different instance types. So guys, now it is time for us to create a brand new instance. So right now I am in the AWS console and in the top part we have got a search bar and let us search for EC2. By the way, do you guys know the full form of EC2? So the full form is Elastic Compute Cloud. But do you know what is the meaning of this particular two at the end of EC2? So the two signifies the two C's that is Elastic Compute Cloud. So to basically represent the two C's, the letter two is used that is Elastic Compute Cloud. So right now let's click on EC2 under the services and that is going to directly take us to the EC2 dashboard. So under the EC2 dashboard, we are going to get a complete overview of uh, the instance and the resources. For example, you can see the currently running instances, the number of elastic IPs, the key value pairs, the instances, the load balances, security groups, and a whole lot of things. And this entire resources is being displayed for the region that you have selected. In my case, all this information is displayed for the region US-East-2. And as you change the region, the entire data also gets updated according to the region that you have selected. So to create a new instance in the left side, we are going to click on the instances option right here. And uh, in this particular page, I'm going to click on launch instances. So this is the place where we configure our instance. So this is a brand new UI of AWS. And uh, the first option that we have got is name and tag. So first of all, I want to give a name for my instance. That is first dash machine. And here we have got an option to add additional tag so you can click on it. So this is the place where we basically add a new tag. So since we have already provided a name for our instance, so it has automatically identified the name and provided a corresponding uh, value to it, which is uh, the name we have given to our instance. For example, if you want to add another tag, you can simply click on add tag and provide the corresponding value here. So this is how you can basically create tags. So the next option right here is application and OS images that is Amazon machine image in short form AMI. So what is an AMI? In simple word, AMI is basically a package or a template. And this package basically consists of an operating system, uh, an application server, and depending upon the type of for the AMI, it can also come with some specific application. So this is what Amazon machine image is. So right now here we have selected Amazon Linux AMI. 
so here you can see amazon linux 2 ami kernel version is 5.10 and a lot of information so this particular ami is free tier eligible so it is also possible to create custom ami so you can basically configure a custom ami based on your requirement as well or else you can visit aws marketplace and you can browse for amis that have been created by other community members as well so here you can see as i change uh, the ami the corresponding content inside it also changes depending upon uh, the type of ami you you choose but for this video i'm going to choose a free tier eligible ami that is amazon linux ami and after that if i scroll down here you can see the instance type so here we have got a t2 micro that is basically a general purpose instance which comes under the t family so this particular uh, instance type is also free tier eligible and i can select uh, instance type from a wide range so the selection of an instance uh, mainly depend upon uh, the requirement of your application so for this video again i'm going to go with a free tier eligible instance that is t2 micro after that we have got key pair login so key pair login basically acts as a security credential that proves that you are the owner of the instance so that you can access it so whenever you are trying to SSH onto an instance, you need to basically showcase this particular key value pair so that uh, it is identified that you are the owner of the instance and you will be provided the access to access the instance. And for that case, a key pair is required. So if it is your first time creating an instance, you can click on create a new key pair here. And here you can provide a name for your key pair, select RSC as the type. And uh, here you can select PEM for uh, open SSH or if you're using windows with putty you can select .ppk since i have already got a key pair i'm going to select my key pair right from here and after that we have got network setting so network setting is a really crucial point and uh, let's click on the edit option and uh, dive a bit deep in so first of all here you can select a vpc and uh, for now we are going to go with a default vpc but uh, as you learn more about aws you'll be landing upon vpcs uh, how do you can create custom VPCs and a lot of things. So VPCs are really powerful and can give a whole lot of control over uh, a lot of networking aspects. So basically VPC stands for virtual private cloud. So here we are going to select the default VPC. And after that, we have the security groups. So here we are creating a new security group. So the name of security group is launch wizard 4 and then we have got a basic description of uh, the security group which you can customize uh, depending upon uh, the type of security group that you're creating so by default we have got a single security group rule that is basically an ssh rule so this particular ssh rule helps us to access our instance so if you remove this particular rule we cannot ssh onto our instance so for example if you want to add a new security rule then you can click on add security rule for example, if I want an HTTP rule, I can select this from here and the source tab can be from anywhere so that anybody or any traffic can access my website. So this is how you can basically add a security group rule as well. So for now, we are going to settle off with just a single security group rule that is an SSH rule. And then we have got storage, which I'm going to leave as it is. So we are not going to take a look at the advanced details as of now. And uh, so on the right side we have got a basic summary of for uh, the entire thing that we have done that is the configuration that we have done so the number of instances that we are going to spin up is just one so the ami is the amazon linux 2 kernel version 5.10 ami and uh, the instance type is t2 micro then we have got the security group as well as the volume and after that i'm going to click on launch instance so now aws is creating an instance so successfully initiate a launch of instance and now let's click on view all instances and if i refresh it here you can see our instance is currently in the pending state and after a couple of seconds and in some cases after a couple of minutes our instance will be all set and here you can see while i am talking our instance is all running so let's refresh it once more and if i select the instance here you can see the entire details about the instance so here you can see the uh, name of the instance the instance id the current instance state the type of the instance and uh, here we can see the availability zone under which the instance is basically placed then we have got a whole lot of information here as well so right here we have got uh, the public ip before address the private ip before address the private ip dns address and a whole lot of things so 
we also have got the security tag where you can see our security uh, type that we have configured then we have got the network settings here the storage settings the status checks monitoring and a lot of things so this is how we can basically create an instance and now let's also see how we can terminate an instance as well so i have selected the instance and here you can see the instance state so if i click on it you can stop the instance so stopping the instance won't delete the instance and sometimes you can be still charged a, a little bit of money if you stop the instance so you can restart or reboot an instance so to completely get rid of an instance or, or to delete an instance you need to terminate it so terminating an instance completely removes it so as of now we are not doing any of that so now let's see how we can connect to an instance so guys there are a couple of different ways in which you can connect to an instance and i'll be showing all that in this video so first of all i have selected the instance then i'm going to click on the connect option in the top part so these are the different ways in which you can connect to an instance so the first one is ec2 instance connect second one is session manager the third one is ssh client and the last one is ec2 serial console and for this video i'll be demonstrating the just uh, the first one that is ec2 instance connect and third one that is ssh client so let's start off with the first one ec2 instance connect so here you can see the id of uh, the instance that we have created then you can see the public ip address and finally you can also see a username that is ec2 dash user so every instance that you create will automatically comes with an associated username uh, with which you will uh, log on to or uh, you will access the instance so ec2 instance connect is uh, the easiest way to connect to an instance so all i have to do is to click on the connect option right here it op opens up a new tab and right here i can completely access my machine right from my browser that's it i have got uh, access to my machine so you can see uh, aws amazon.com amazon linux 2 and the two packages need to needed for security and uh, here you can see the ip so ip is 172-31-44-78 so if we check our instance if we select it here you can see this is the same ip so the private ip for address and the address right here is exactly the same and i can run all my linux command right here for example i can enter present work directory I can do ls and a whole lot of things who am I? So this basically works as a normal computer. You can install packages, you can deploy application and everything can be done right here. So this is the first and possibly one of the most easiest way to connect to an instance. And uh, when I'm done with it, I can just close the tab and that's it. So this is the first way to connect to an instance. So guys, now let's see how you can connect to your instance by using SSH. So for that, I'm going to click on SSH client right here. So here we are given a couple of steps uh, that can be followed in order to connect to the instance. So first of all, it is said that open an SSH client. So for Mac, it is uh, the terminal. And uh, for Windows, sometimes it can be already installed in PowerShell as well. So after that, uh, we need to locate our private key file. So SSH uh, is basically a process where we access the instance by using the key pair, which we have already created when we created the instance. And here, there's an important uh, information that you guys need to understand. Run this command if necessary to ensure your key is not publicly viewable. So this particular uh, command is really, really important. And this is where a lot of people make mistake and uh, they get a lot of trouble connecting to an instance. So let me just quickly fire up my terminal and I have got it right here. So the first thing is that uh, you need to basically locate uh, the folder or the directory in which you have basically saved your key pair login credential. So that is a folder that you want to be in in order to connect to your instance. So right here, I'm going to redirect to desktop, a folder named as AWS. So if I ls on to this particular folder, here you can see we have got a file named as uh, Peter's AWS Jan.pem. So this is basically the key pair that we have selected when we created the instance. So after that, I'm going to simply copy this particular. So before that, let's see what is the current permission of this particular file. So for that, I'm going to simply enter ls dash l. And uh, here you can see that for this particular file, it's already just read only permission. Because since I have been using this particular key pair for uh, a lot of side projects, it's already uh, being uh, changed uh, to read only uh, permission. 
but in your case if it is your first time creating a key pair login it might be read and write so in that case you can simply copy this particular command from here and paste it right over here and press enter and uh, it's going to be automatically changed to just read only permission for the corresponding file so this is a really crucial step and uh, please don't forget to do this particular step and once that is done you are all set to connect your instance so for that just simply copy this particular uh, example command from here this is basically a simple ssh command uh, which basically provides uh, the name of uh, the key pair uh, login credential then the username and uh, then this is basically the dns address so i'll talk about that in a second so let's copy it and let's paste it so here you can see that we are basically trying to connect to our instance by using the dns so if you go back to instance if you select the instance over here, here you can see we are basically trying to connect via our public IPv4 DNS that is stated right over here. But one of the preferred way to connect to an instance is uh, basically using uh, uh, the public IPv4 address as well. So both of them are pointing to the same place, but uh, it is kind of preferred to use the IPv4 uh, address. So I'm going to simply copy it and I'm going to paste our uh, public ipv4 address and i'm gonna press enter so here i need to enter an s and after that i'll be directly connected to my instance so that's it right now i am in my computer here you can see the username and uh, the ip address of it and i can perform all the different tasks for example i can enter who am i present working directory sorry present working directory i can do an ls and all those things can be performed right over here. So this is uh, the way or the SSH way to connect your instance. And I hope that you guys got uh, the basic idea of uh, the different ways in which you can connect your instance. And uh, to kill this particular uh, terminal, you can enter uh, Control or D, both in the case of uh, Mac as well as Windows. And that is gonna uh, close the connection. So that's it guys, we are done with the video. So one another thing that I want to remind you guys is that uh, make sure that you terminate your instance uh, if you are not going to use it again. So in my case, I'm going to terminate it. So I have selected my instance, then I'm going to click on instance state, then I'm going to click on terminate instance, then I'm going to confirm by clicking on terminate. And that's it. Now my instance is in the shutting down state and after a couple of seconds it will be completely terminated otherwise if you keep your uh, instance running for a long period of time even if it is in a free tier account you will be charged a bit of money so make sure that if you're not going to use instance don't basically waste the resource and terminate the instance immediately so thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video